we're back. back. <laughs> <laughs> this is Devin Lavore and Michelle Lavore coming, coming at, at you. <laughs> now, in our previous video, we talked about like the amazing thing that God has been doing in my wife's heart as far as like giving her peace in the situation, you know. And it reminded me when she was telling the story. I didn't want to interrupt too much. Uh, <laughs> But it reminded me of this uh, contest that was given to kids to paint a picture of peace. That was all the information they were given. You know, people painted unicorns and rainbows and glitter and all, you know, sound of music tiptoeing through the field type of thing. But the one that won the, uh, the, the painting that won the contest was of this bird on this you know, barren branch singing amidst of this terrible windstorm and rain and all that. And I was just like, wow, God gave whoever won that, th that thing, God gave them that. Mm -hmm. Because that is a picture of God's peace. Mm -hmm. A picture of God's peace is Jesus sleeping in the boat during yeah. a storm mm -hmm. that's pe that, if you can sleep through that you're a man of peace yeah. trust me <laughs> and it's like that is what God has done in, in our lives but on uh, uh, maybe coming at it from a different angle like what God has done in my life I mean literally like I think that for me this started like during that whole time for the training wheels to come off thing mm -hmm. I just didn't understand exactly what had happened the fullness of what had happened but God, it's it's not like he just burnt, he, it's not like he planted a seed. The seed actually blossomed in the heart. It broke yeah. through and it started to grow very fast. And what it was, was self-confidence. Not confidence in the flesh or a fleshly kind of confidence. That's not what I'm talking about. And it's really it's really more like not necessarily self-confidence. I, I I misnamed that. It really is confidence in the Lord. Mm -hmm. But it but it does have a self-confidence tie-in because the backdrop is my entire life, I'm 45 years old, I'll be 46 in February. 45 years old, I do not remember a time in my life where I have not depended on other people or depend, meaning depended on them for affirmation and am I doing this right and am I okay and I and friends who might watch this from the past would be like yeah that's true I, I you know <laughs> but um, I'm always I've always been a self doubt person you know I and I've known the Lord for 23 years now all 23 of those years it's been like a struggle for me because mm -hmm. you know I will feel like the Lord's saying something to me right. But then someone else will come along, someone who I, uh, I appreciate and I respect and I look up to, and they'll say, oh, no, I, I don't think that's the Lord, brother. Boom, and I'm done, yeah. right? Yeah. Or I'm really, really struggling super hard to maintain, and eventually it probably just falls away for me, you know, or I struggle or, you know, mm -hmm. I think that's why it's taken me, so, hey, I think that's why it's taken me so long to write my stories yeah. because... I've wanted to, I've been excited to do it, you know, that natural, healthy heart excitement of, oh, this is exciting, I want to do this, this looks mm -hmm. like it's fun, and it's like, no, nah, that's not the Lord, you know, it's like, that's all the enemy would have to do, or, or someone would have to do, be like, well, I don't know, I don't know if the Lord wants you writing stories, brother, maybe you should just write stories, of, you know, write books about, God's giving you a gift of writing, hmm, let me pray for the direction of God for your life, because I do it better than you do. And it doesn't cost me anything to speak into your life. So let me uh, share with you, this is the direction that God has for you. You know what? I got to a point where I stopped listening to that, but it still affected me. Yeah. It still affected me big time. And I know for a fact that right now in this time of my life where God, I feel like the whole prophetic training school that God was taking us through, that was it for me. Mm -hmm. That was the end of that story of always depending on other people. Because, you know, even during that prophetic season, I'm looking to all these other different prophetic voices, and I'm in my heart, just my default setting. And that's the problem with default settings, is you don't realize you're operating in them, mm -hmm. you know? My default setting is, oh, they hear from the Lord better than me. Oh, well, if so-and-so said this, then that's got to be true. That's got to be true. And if what they're saying is true then I must be doing something wrong. Yeah. Because what they're saying, I'm like, I'm not really sensing that or feeling that for me, but 
but they said it, so I've got it. It's got to be right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's like God has just totally taken that away from me to the the, the same degree of the peace over the finances and stuff that has happened for her, that's what's happened for me mm -hmm. in, this, in the level of confidence. Because ever since the Lord took the training wheels off, you know, of constantly depending on other people, because they hear better you know, than me, you know, and that really is a self-worth thing. Yeah. And that really, honestly, not to get too deeply theological, it really is a love of God thing. And uh, it's a reflection of really how I think God thinks about me. You know, I'm going to give them clear direction for your life, but you, you're going to struggle. It's going to be muddy and you're never really going to know. Yeah. That's, oh my gosh, can you see the, I, I'm sure someone outside of the situation can look at that and go, wow, that's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the error of that kind of thinking, but yeah. that's like how I've lived my whole, my whole life really. Yeah. But even my life in the Lord, I mean, I've gotten victory and I know who the Lord is. Our relationship is intimate, but man, woo. Man, what he has touched on, what I'm telling you, is is a huge deal. Yeah. It's like the Nebuchadnezzar tree, just like, and he's already done that once in my life with the with a rejection issue. This is equally as amazing. Mm -hmm. And I will link that video if you guys want to watch it. It's a it's a long one, but it's it's incredible that I'm walking around right now in this sense of confidence that's like Wow, Lord, I think this is how you want me to feel. Mm -hmm. This is how you wanted me to act. Because I'm listening to, I'm still listening to, you know, other prophetic people online and stuff like that. I listen to what they're saying, that God is saying, and, you know, may, maybe this word's for you and you should be doing this, that, and everything. That kind of stuff would mess me up, even during that prophetic season that we just came out of. Not that we're out of the prophetic season, it's just like... We're out of that, that training. That, that we're had. out of that training ground. So the training wheels are off. So that we don't need other people to speak into your life. Because and and another thing is, what was going on during that prophetic time? It was all confirmation. Yeah. All of it. Confirmation encourages what's already there. What's yeah. already there. Yeah. What God's already told you. Oh my gosh, God showed me this. God, and it was just it was just a big season of encouragement. Of like, yeah. listen, man, you hear from the Lord. Yeah. Can you come to grips with that? Can you agree with that? I've spent an entire season just letting you marinate in the fact that you hear from God. No, not everyone's going to agree with you. Yes, people are going to think you're crazy. Some people are even going to want to come against it and all that, but that's fine. But it's like you hear from the Lord and you've heard from me since the day you were born again. Yeah. It's like, you know... <laughs> There was a period of time where I didn't doubt hearing from the Lord. But then other people started telling me, well, no, brother, that's not the Lord. And, and that religious spirit got on me. and then, Or just that religious culture, you know, that we've been raised in anyway. And I don't know, it's just been, it's just been really profound to the point where I like, I don't even know what to do with myself. You know what I mean? I'm just like, wow, this is a new thing you're doing. And I am going to have to learn how to walk in this. But you know what? When God has done new things in the past, I've always been afraid to walk mm -hmm. in it. I've always tiptoed through it. This, no way. I'm like, because it's a confidence issue and it's connected with the fact that I know who the Lord is. I trust him. I am confident, confident in him. I, I, I really wish there was some way that you could take emotion and transfer it <laughs> through the through an experience or a, or a communication because it's like it's it's more than emotion it's like this new state of being that yeah. both of us have arrived in basically at the same time yeah now let me tell you something we're believing for physical manifestation and a lot of people out there are believing for some sort of physical manifestation some great mir miracle some massive increase in your business or something like that we're believing for all that as well Imagine having those issues in place when you receive and God something. blesses you with the very thing that you're hoping to be blessed with. I think, personally, it would crush you. Yeah. And we're like crying that. out to God, God, move us, God, move us, God, move us, God, move us. And he's like, well, just trust me. Lean on me. I, I got you. You know, I've been telling you that this whole time because there's some things that I still have to deal with. That I have to get ready and prepared in you that if I gave you the thing now, it would crush you to death. Because the way he's going to do it, 
maybe it's not going to be like a, oh great, I, I'm all set up financially and then I, I don't need the Lord financially anymore. You know, and it's like, now a lot of people have money and God can lead you into wealth and all that and you get to the place where I'm not, I'm not crying out to God for my electric bill to be paid. God wants you to get to that place. Yeah. I know, I, I know for a fact that's God's will. But at the same time, it's like, you know, if, if you have all that money and you can still be freaking out. Yeah. I mean, it, you can definitely, <laughs> it's, well, because be you're afraid finding, of losing it. Because honestly, you know? you're finding, it's like at that point, you're really finding your security in your money, mm -hmm. you know? And so there can still be just a tremendous amount of fear of what happens if that disappears? What happens if that leaves? And so, like, that's why I feel like it's such a big breakthrough for me because I know right now that it's like, it doesn't matter if God gives us millions of dollars or ten dollars. It's like, I know where my security is. My security is in Jesus and God and not in... Who is the provider? Who who, is the and, and not this, like... Okay, we we don't have this. We and this and you know and I think because I've I've been there. Like I know, like not that I've had millions of dollars or anything, but I've had more than enough. Oh, that's coming. And <laughs> <laughs> and you know, before I got married, it was just me and like the money that I had was making. It was like okay, I have more than enough for myself. But even there, it was just there was always fear. There was just so much fear, and it's like I just praise the Lord that. And you had he's like a that. really decent savings before you met me. <laughs> before you got married and had kids, and like okie dokie. Well, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> but I mean, it's just it is. I think that God, He wants to, He grows us up so that he can place things on us that and that and, we will be able to handle yeah. in the character of Jesus. Yeah. And he knows fully confident. And it's like and it's just I can't explain it. It's hard yeah. for me to explain. But it's like you do need that, you know, and, and like I feel like and what's so awesome is God will do it. We don't have to sit there and yeah. be like, okay, let me try and work this out. Let me work this out. Let me work this out. And it's really God moving, God showing you who he is and, and just being along on this journey that it's like he starts taking things out and it's like, wow, this is like, in a way, you know, Jesus said like my, my yoke is easy, you know, his, yeah, his, burden, is his burden is light because that really is the truth. Like there are times when it does not feel that way, but really it is easy in the sense of even things that we need to work on or we feel like, man, my character is not strong in this area. It's like I God... I mean, technically, I could still be getting prepared to be married and, like, never get married. Yeah. You know, because it's like, well, I got to work on this before I get married and I got to work on this before I get married. Well, I'm never going to get married because it's yeah. just like... I'm always, there's always something. Yeah. But God knows that moment when, okay, now you're ready for this. The very thing I've been preparing you to get ready yeah. for. Yeah. You know? And, like... Yeah, so it's like trusting God that He's He is going to get you prepared and that it's not going to be this, like Devin said, where it's like, well, it's never going to happen then because <laughs> I've got a laundry list of things that's going to need to change. But that's you focusing on what you think you need to change. God knows exactly what you're going to need and where your heart needs to be in order for Him to fulfill the promise that He has. And But what I was saying too is, What's really awesome is that when we allow God just to do what he wants to do in our hearts, it just comes out. It's it like when he is allowed to remove things, it's it really is an easy thing. You know, you know why it's a difficult thing? I think personally is cuz we're actually holding on mm -hmm. to the thing that we want him to take. Yeah. I know that's a weird thing, but it's like, no, no, oh, no. I don't know how it, how it works, but it's like, I just think that's what makes it difficult. We're actually holding on to the thing that he's, that, that he's trying to take and that we actually want him to take. Yeah. You know? Or it's like you can just be really striving in yourself 
to change yourself. You know, it's like, oh, well, I, I have fear. Well, let me go look up all these books about fear <laughs> and yes. I'll read through them. Let me get, ooh, and then, Joseph Prince came out with a book. I know I'm going to get delivered if, yeah. with his book. So, you know? <laughs> But it's like when we allow God to do the delivering, I think there isn't condemnation. Right. There, there is just so much freedom and allowing there self him. Effort. Yeah, there's not the self effort. And then, which leads basically to failure and disappointment. Because yeah. I, and I can tell you guys. I mean, really, like <laughs> even last month, at some point, we were, we were struggling with the money, and I literally like told God, I was just like, "Well, Lord, if this issue has to be dealt with before all this is going to happen, then we're going to be here forever." Because I really was just like, I don't see personally how this is going to change. Right. And Especially when he's not letting me continue with the writing yet. Yeah. It's like, you're not, no. He's, God has spoken very clearly to me that I am not going to do the writing. It's like, yes, it's time to go back to farming like I did in that video. But it's like, not until you get to the land where I've, where I've uh, allotted for you to start the farming. And I'm like, well, what? What in the world is going on? Why are we here? Like, what are you doing? This is what he's doing right yeah. here. You yeah. know, the confidence. Of, it really is kind of a confidence thing for both of us, yeah. though, isn't it? Yeah. It's like just building up confidence in him. Because if you don't have that, once you get to anywhere I send you, you are going to get knocked out in the first round. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're going to get out cold stretched, as they say in the <laughs> UFC. I mean, just like. You know, with the, shining a light in your face, you can't even, he's still out, man. Yeah. He just laid out on the canvas. He's still out because that's what's going to happen. If you don't have confidence in the Lord and your strength is, is, is challenged with every little upset thing that happens and you just want to crumple into an emotional basket case, it's like, Right here, I got several t-shirts that say basket case on them, so I'm not pointing a finger, trust me. But it's like, if that's what's going to happen, then, man, I got to build you up. I, I, Yes, I want you to have that thing, you know? And it's like, in reference to, can I keep going? Yeah. In reference to the miracle and the promise and all that and the dream that God has for you, that God placed in you, it's like, I feel like we're at that place of like, Totally contentedness before, you know, as a single person. It's like, I genuinely am content. If I never get married, okay, no big deal. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty cool. I know that you have a spouse out there for me, but I'm totally content. Like, if that's that's what's going to happen. I feel like we're, we're at that place mm -hmm. right now. Generally, you get married or you meet the person right after that. Generally. Now, for me and my story, I was never content. <laughs> I never experienced that thing. I was just like... I was I, I I experienced death in Mike's. I was just like, this is never gonna happen. Yeah. I just gave up. And God's like, okay, are you done? You done you done moping after these two days? Cause I got a vision and a dream that I'm trying to get to you. See, and that, even in that, just a sidestep, which I never do, but <laughs> <laughs> but even in that, I had totally given up, but God didn't. Yeah. See, you you may think, oh, I've given up, therefore I've disqualified myself for the promise. Not necessarily, because God's going to come to you and say, hey, I'm still in this. I'm still trying to get this to you. I'm still trying to help you. But in the process, I'm building up your character. I know you think that's the boring stuff and the unnecessary stuff. And just, man, I don't need another prophetic word. Where's my thing? It's like, I know that's what you're thinking. But the truth of the matter is, you need to have the heart change yeah. before you can receive the promise. Before you can. That's why. Man, that is why the nation of Israel coming out of Egypt didn't go into the promised land because they didn't have the heart change. Yeah. You know, you go you don't have the heart change, you're going to go into the promised land with that gimme 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 poverty mentality. Oh my gosh, all my stuff, you know what I mean? And it's like or for me in my case like, oh, I got to go and listen to other people. You go into the promised land or they're you don't realize it, but they're actually submitted to foreign gods, and yeah. you're going to listen to them, and now you're getting foreign god information. There's people that I like on Facebook, and I consider friends, or like Facebook friends, you know how that is. But it's like, some of the things that they end up saying, I mean, these are really up there people, mm -hmm. right? I mean, up there in the, like, maybe the social world and all that. 
but some of the things that they post on their Facebook and some of the things they're trying to give to you as like, oh, this is good. This is a good way for you to think about life and go after life like this. I go, man, no. It's like you're so wrapped up in that that Zig Ziglar culture. Love Zig Ziglar. I'm not saying anything bad about that. But with that comes a lot of other things and a lot of other teachings that are not godly. You know, because Zig Ziglar was a godly man. But yeah. it's like, sometimes you can be so wrapped up in that culture, that corporate culture, whatever. Stuff starts to seep in. It's like from foreign, it's foreign to the to the kingdom of God, but you're preaching it like it is. And I just, I go, oh. But see, if God has not done in my heart what he's just done and solidified it, you know, really for like, what, a week or so now mm -hmm. since the training wheels thing, since we transitioned, I would totally submit, and I'd be like, well, I, you know what, if so-and-so, like, big-name person, if I mention them, says it, I, I apparently it needs to be done. This is the Lord. That's what you have yeah. end up saying. It's like, oh, this is the Lord. I have to do this. Well, and I think it's and like... God might be saying in your heart, don't do that. Yeah. But because they're saying it, I would probably do it, and that's bad. Yeah, and I think, though, really, it's it's God bringing us to a place where it's like the waves and things we're not being pushed over yes. and like it's like you're getting tossed <laughs> by everything walk on that's the water now. coming yeah i want to go walk let's go do it. <laughs> <laughs> but it is it's like god really does have to get us to a point in our life where we aren't pushed over by everything that comes at us and, and then have an emotional meltdown because we were pushed over and we yeah. thought we were stronger but we're not strong enough and it's like where are my doritos <laughs> <laughs> Where's my comfort food? <laughs> yeah. But I just, I, I also want to just encourage you. I know, like, we're talking about how God, like, the heart change needs to happen. And mm -hmm. let me just, like, all you need to do is just ask God. Invite God to just work on your heart. And he's going to do it. Like, don't you don't have to come up with, like, okay, for the next 30 days, I'm going to do this. And God can, you know, it's, no, just 30 allow. 30 steps to success. Yeah, it's like, just allow God <laughs> to unfold things yeah. in your life. Because that's really what he's been doing. And because of the that's work the that he's been doing, he's brought breakthrough in areas that, honestly, like, like, for me. We like, even I didn't, thinking about wasn't or even, asking yeah. about. Yeah. And, and it's it's like, like, but we're, we're pivotal. Yeah, we're pivotal extremely to what we pivotal. Needed, you know? And um, so just just be encouraged by the fact that when you all, just by allowing and inviting God to just work on your heart however he needs to do it and just trusting him in the process, you are going to see the breakthrough in those areas. And it's not something that you have to just be like, you know, chiseling away at and so like work yourself yeah, up working, and all that. Yeah, yeah. And, um, so yeah, just, just know that and know too that it's like that God is, he knows exactly the moment you're ready and he will give you the things that he wants to give you in that time. And, um, and, and I just want to encourage some people out there on this, on this, you have heard from God. Yeah. You have heard from God. If you've gone through the test, how do you know? that you've heard from God. Man, it just keeps coming up. Yeah. I have this vision that I have not shared with anybody in regards to like how our promise is going to come to pass, and it is a suddenly vision that God gave me back in September of 2002. Yeah. And it is constantly with me. If it was the enemy or the enemy seed or something like that, God would have taken that out probably before the end of 2002. Yeah. Or however long I was gonna hold on to it. If it was not the Lord, he would have taken that out. And I'm telling you, it just stays with me. The the vision of God just constantly repeat. How many times have we talked about vision? I mean, we got married in 2008. How many times just in 2009 did we think, well, what's the vision of God for our life? What's the vision? And what would always come up? Photography, dance, yeah. uh, writing. writing and writing and writing. You know what <laughs> I mean? And it's just like these things keep coming up. And then you think, oh, that's not the Lord. I'm just going to give that up. It's, it's probably not the Lord. And here it comes back up again. Yeah. And here it comes back up again. That is God trying to tell you like, hey, this is what I want you to do. This is what I've called you to do. Once you solidify like, okay, Lord, this is what you want me to do. When do you want me to start doing it? 
You know, and you start engaging God in the journey of, I've got a vision playlist. If you guys have questions about that, I have a vision playlist that I may like, that it can answer a lot of questions about the vision from God and how to hear from God and how do you know you've heard from God and all that. I know a lot of people like the prophetic stuff, but my, my channel is basically founded on teaching the kingdom of God and who God is and what he's like and how you can get to know him. Yeah. But it's like you, we've got to be confident and see, and I guess I'm trying to transfer what I've just experienced, what's been solidified in me. I'm trying to give that to you once again through this video of just like, hey, you've heard from the Lord, you know? If you've tested it and you're, you know that you know that it's from the Lord, that does not mean that it's still not going to get attacked. That doesn't yeah. mean that the enemy is not going to come to you with this overwhelming spirit of discouragement and try to get you to abort it and say, ah, oh, no, I wasn't the Lord. That's still going to happen, but you can recognize it. And one of the things the Lord gave me today, I'm not going to go deep into it, was like, don't even engage it. Don't yeah. even engage with that that spirit. Because sometimes a spirit, it just wants your attention. It doesn't yeah. matter whether it's positive or negative. It just wants your attention. It wants you to engage in the thing that it's doing so it can have influence. And God's like, don't even mess with it. Yeah. That's what the Lord told me this morning. Don't even engage with it. Don't try to battle it or fight it or spiritual warfare, the thing. Just, you recognize it? Okay, I'm not listening to you. Boom, spiritual warfare done. You know what I mean? It's just like, what's God doing? That's what God wants you to focus on, what he's doing. And I just want to encourage you guys that, like, I feel like there's some people out there that you're struggling with, whether you've heard from God or not. You've just got to know that you've heard from the Lord. And you know whether you've really heard from the Lord or not or whether it's just you. You know, and God will bring you to the end of that. And he will just continue to encourage you over and over and over again. Like, yep, you've heard. Yep, you've heard. Yep, <laughs> you know what I mean? And if it's not the Lord, you'll know. Yeah. Because there will be no peace on it, no grace on it. Because there are a lot of times you can hear from the Lord, and it is the Lord, and then you step out to do it, and then you get the resistance of the Lord. And you're going, wait a minute, Lord, I thought you wanted me to do this. You know, I'm getting into some of my other videos now. But it's like, I thought you wanted me to do this. Like, well, well hold on, I want you, I want us to do it. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to go do it for me. I want us to do it together. That's yeah. a whole other video. Check out the playlist. <laughs> <laughs> Did you want to say anything else, baby? No. All right. Well, that's yeah. it for us today. This has been a two-part video, and it's still really long. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's why we wanted to cut it up into two parts. Maybe we should have done three parts. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, just remember, guys, um, we really appreciate you considering um, giving to us. Yep. Um, if you can't, we totally get that. We've been there a million times, this not being able to give. Um, but we appreciate everything that has been given to us so far. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. Every amount. Every amount. We don't even care. Yep. It's just like we just praise the Lord for you. And um, pray blessing on all of you as our yes. subscribers and anyone who might watch this video that the Lord, the deliverance of the Lord would come to your life as well and that you would see just how good he is, that he is setting up and he's taking the steps that need to be taken for our good. Yes. You know, all things work together for our good. So. That's all we have. Yep. All right. Well, thank you guys. And we will see you later. Bye. Ha, ha, ha.